Are you ready to start? Somebody else is coming? No? Okay, let's start. So, <laughs> students, um, GISA board, and uh, candidates. GISA is here to seeking new candidates for the next um, semester, for the next positions. The positions open these times is for the president, for the VP of the master programs, and the event coordinator. So just a quick statement, um, the lecture is going to be recorded, so everything what you're saying is going to be on the GISA website for students that are not attending today. And um, yeah, let's begin. Uh, today's electoral debate is here to present the, the students that candidate for the positions to clarify what um, they stand for, for what they're candidating and also gives room to the audience to ask questions. Okay, um, before we start, um, let me introduce you to the rules. Um, we start with a short presentation, so every candidate is welcome to present its position here um, at, the at the panel, and afterwards we have a short debate among the panelists and the followed by the Q&A session by the audience. Okay, um, I propose that the um, candidate who is running for the president is uh, presenting first. Yes, there's a time limit of three minutes for the first presentation. Andre, are you? you? Would you like to come to the podium? Well, there are not so many people here, but to be recorded, so I expect that what I say here, people will watch after. Well, I like to be the president of GISA for a long time, like since my first year, but I didn't run that option, that opportunity. And now I decided to run because I think I have, as I said in my letter and I said in my event, I have passed the masters, so I have passed two years in this institute. And then I'm going to the doctor, so be more four years here. So I have the experience to be the president. I mean, I know a lot of things got going on with the problems of the masters, and I will be here more four years. That means that if anything goes wrong, in my mandate, I will be here still to people come and say to me, you are doing a shit job because I will be here in the second year. So when I finish my mandate, I will still be here. And everything goes right or wrong, I will be suffering or take opportunity of the advantage or I mean the, the things that I, I did right and the things I did wrong. So I think it's a, a new thing here because never before, as far as I know, was a president of a doctor so I think it gives the opportunity to have a long-term perspective. And I think as the president, my main responsibility is to deal with the graduate institute administration, per se, and the whole Geneva International. And uh, the graduate institute, per se, my main point is transparency. What I mean is like, if you see the graduate institute has a uh, kind of agreement with the Geneva government and the Confederation government that stipulates that after four years they negotiate this agreement and for this agreement they have special indicators. But you just follow these indicators every four years. So one of my main proposals is to try to push to publish these indicators every single year. And these indicators are like uh, how many professors are like the, the, how many people get a job after graduation. There are a lot of like, there are 
kind of budget, everything that they have to present to the Swiss government and public, public publicize uh, every four years, my, my intention is to have this every single year, or at least biannual. So I think it's a, a good way to improve transparency here. And it's not a thing that I'm creating from nowhere. They have a right to do that. It's by law, they have to do it. The only thing that I, I want to have access to this data. So they have to, and like next year, you'll be the year that you have to negotiate these agreements. So I think you have a good opportunity to have a leverage now, because the institute has to negotiate these agreements, and you are going on this month uh, to the Parliament of Geneva. So I think you have some political leverage to push for this transparency uh, movement inside the institute. And I think these were more or less my flag in during my campaign. And I think the graduate, the GISA also has a role in the International Geneva. And I think the example of GISA is doing now of the Pay Your Interns Initiative is a, a marvelous example of how GISA can work. And I promise that I'll work on that too. I want to expand that. I want to contact probably uh, associations in Columbia University or other associations like Vienna or in, in Paris that has interns for United Nations and try to expand the network on this area. So it's fine, yeah. Thank you so much. Andre, please have a seat on the panel. Okay, the next person who is presenting is the events coordinator, Luciana. Uh, good afternoon, good night, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for being here, and thank you for whoever is also listening to that. Um, uh, well, events coordinator, for me, it's a quite interesting position. I personally really like uh, social involvement, uh, parties, be with people groups, and I think it's really important, uh, even in an academic environment and as this, to uh, reserve some time for that. Uh, not only writing theses and everything, but uh, having this time to get to know people you're studying with, professors as well, and staff here. And I think it's something that haven't really been uh, done or we haven't maybe tried enough. And uh, it's one of my, my platforms to try to bring people together uh, we know little about each other. We basically know people from our uh, group of friends or our year or our program. And I think uh, what I'll, I'll try to bring here is events that can bring the whole institute together so we can get to know better each other. Even like um, in academic terms, uh, there are many people here doing like researches that uh, are the same as ours or can uh, can help us with many things, as, and we don't know. Like I just, as myself, an example, I just discovered somebody who's actually doing a thesis on uh, the same topic. I'll be doing my thesis, and just like one year after I'm here. Uh, so, and I mean doing that not only through parties, which basically most of us like, of course, but through other activities, potlucks, barbecues maybe uh, even a uh, volunteer day, uh, cooking together, maybe cooking lessons. Uh, and actually, I want to ask you what you guys want. Uh, try to research um, what you people think, what are your expectations, how would you like to know better other people from the Institute? Uh, also, another thing, I'd like to involve the initiatives more in the events that we held. And, uh, um, oh, sorry. <laughs> so um, uh, what I've been also looking for, uh, I already take a kind of step ahead. I'm already looking for venue, venues for um, events uh, next semester so we can improve on prices and make even profitable parties for GISA and try to make new things and even an open bar party next, the second semester next year, who knows. Uh, yes, so what I also did is like an urgent list of uh, ta uh, things that have to be done like this semester, what we have now, like the cabaret, 
the interns forum, the thesis barbecue next semester, graduation party that we have to be in line also with the graduation committee and also the welcome week and the party. So I'll be mainly focused in that uh, this uh, next month. Uh, I think that's it. Um, I'm open for questions. Thank you very much and may the fourth be with you. Thank you, Luciana. So we have two more candidates candidating for the VP of the master's program. Um, who wants to start off you both? Okay, go ahead. So good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Vanessa Sampaio. I'm a first year MDEP. And I want, to share my I want to start my presentation by sharing actually my motivation to be here today, why I decided to run for GISA. And when I entered the institute, of course, I was overwhelmed by so many great things that we have here, but at the same time, I was frustrated and uh, not that motivated with some other things. But as natural, I had that feeling, well, uh, things are not going to change, um, or I, I, I may talk with other people so other people can uh, address this issue. And well, uh, during over the semester, I started to realize that uh, if I want to implement a change and if I'm unhappy with um, some aspects and if I'm not satisfied, I actually need to engage and actually need to participate. And I started to realize that uh, a lot of classmates and a lot of friends had the same feeling as I had, but they had the, the same uh, anxiety in terms of who is going to, to be there to represent us and uh, am I able to make the change? And well, um, I decided that I'm able to make the change uh, in collaboration with all the, the, the students from the institute. And that's why I decided to take this uh, position. And well, uh, if you uh, vote in me, of course, uh, I decided to run for this position and actually represent your wishes of change uh, inside GISA. Uh, my main platform, and well, I'm going to have time to explain in more details my uh, practical uh, strategies, but my main platform is to increase the culture of participation at the Institute. You can think, uh, you can notice that uh, a lot of our demands, for example, having more spaces here to interact and to work at the Institute, they don't go forward because actually people are frustrated with this, but they don't engage, they don't participate. And I think that uh, if we establish uh, um, channels to improve communication between students and class representatives, class representatives and GISA, and GISA and all the students, uh, we can actually have uh, more transparency, and transparency brings more uh, power to GISA, and this is a whole cycle in terms of uh, all the students having more power uh, to actually um, be able to reach the demands that we want. So um, I'm really happy to be here today, and I'm really happy that I'm not running alone, uh, that I have an opponent, because it, share, it, it shows that more people in my program are engaged to change the, this uh, university. Uh, so thank you, Zinfra, for being here today. And I hope we have a nice debate. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please, please have a seat on the panel as well. So you mentioned the keyword. Um, she has an opponent, Basin. Please present your position. Thank you. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Barzin Aryan. And I'm here tonight uh, not to make blunt, blunt promises. I really want to be honest, concise, and take your concerns seriously. I was born in Switzerland uh, to Iranian parents. I moved to the US when I was 16. I've been adapting to new environments and tackling new challenges for a large part of my life. And I'm here to tackle this one. I'm here to run on a platform based firsthand on our relationship with the administration and also on the academic matters and other miscellaneous concerns of the master student body. On the administrative side, I want to build stronger relationships and facilitate communication between us, if I'm elected, GISA, 
board and the administration uh, and use this relationship to build more initiatives uh, for programs and activities uh, for the students of this institute along with the event coordinator and obviously the president and other parties of GISA. Uh, I also want to hold meetings, open meetings, allowing students to participate in the decision-making process and to support a more, you know, democratic, because we love that here, and transparent environment with GISA. And in that process, I also want to hold office hours in the cafeteria instead of in the GISA office, because I feel like it would really incentivize students to be more casual about their approach and less intimidated by having to go all the way to the GISA and knock on the door or whatever. Um, on the academic side, I want to emphasize the uh, importance of getting more feedback on our classes, class assignments and improve the availability of student services, especially for writing, research, and presentation skills, because we all come from different backgrounds and we all come from different countries with different emphasis on certain things. And uh, we come here and some people are lost um, and uh, to acquire these skills, we obviously need workshops or classes or some kind of guidance in that process. Um, now, uh, I also want to provide student space other than the library and the cafeterians uh, and other places. I want, I want the eighth floor, like I want to know what's happening on the eighth floor. It's time. Please wrap up your statement. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, and, okay. So, basically, there's all these things I want to do, um, and I hope you, um, you have a relative idea of what I stand for and what I can do for you, and I hope I'm not too intimidating and you can approach me, and uh, thank you for listening. I have a lot more to say. Thank you. Okay, before we open the discussion, is there any other candidate that want to run for one of the posts? Okay, that's not the case. <laughs> okay. So, before we leave the floor to the audience, I have some question that bothers also me as a student, and um, I want just to pose this question to all of you, and um, well, depending on your position, you might uh, distinguish your answer. So, first of all, um, you always mentioned the point participation and um, the involvement of students in the decision making process. Um, I've, how, how, what is, would be your approach in order to trace the issues on the concern of the students? I'll take it. Um, I think uh, the most important thing in addressing this issue is really to uh, make, to create an environment that's uh, approachable and uh, that students feel uh, less intimidated by um, and be obviously more available through different channels, uh, you know, communication through email, Facebook, uh, and other platforms, but also just to be there and not just to be like formal about it, but also to be, you know, have a casual conversation where students can express their concerns and then have that noted uh, within GISA board meetings and uh, discuss them eventually. Um, yeah, uh, for me it's a, it's a casual and it could be a formal process, but I think it should be uh, informal mostly. Thanks. Well, like building up like in my experience in my university before and as far as I know about like movement of students, social movement of students, I think you should work on the ba on the base on the baseline. And I want the base it for me is like the classic representatives that I think GISA needs to make the work more. I think like have to engage better GISA and them and then with the classmates. Because they are the more or less the how to say the doors of GISA or the they are the, the nodes of the communication between GISA and the, and the, and the people and the, and the students. So m my approach would be, for sure, I agree with Zin, 
that you have to be more like use all kind of channels possible, internet, email, and so on. But I would like focus on making the class primitives work like every month, have a discussion with your, their classmates, try to engage them really hard since the beginning in the, in the issue. Because I think you build up support from the, from the scratch, you know, from the ground. And then you become more and more. And try to bring all the, like, as many as consultations as possible for, like, big decisions and so on. I think this makes few people that they are kind of participating, they are kind of engaged in the process. So I think creating ownership between the, the students and GISA and the graduate, that's it. But not an easy endeavor, I'm sure, but I, I'll try my best. Um, as events goes, I think uh, a more informal approach would be more adequate. Uh, not only being available for them uh, in GISA or like in the corridors of the SED, but doing pools, researching what is expected, uh, and try to see not only before an event what to expect, but after the event, uh, what were the main problems, critiques, and what worked or not to take on uh, uh, to take on uh, a new uh, event or to do it again, to do it in different times. So uh, since I'm not uh, going for as them more like involvement with the students in this level, I'll be like in more in the formal level, I'll do something like that. Well, basically um, my thoughts are based on personal experience, but especially on the demands that I've been hearing over the last weeks. Uh, directly from the students and class representatives. And well, one uh, thing that I was uh, actually pointed out many times uh, about the lack of participation is the lack of time. Some students say, well, I, I actually don't have time to engage and participate in all the meetings. So, uh, and, and the strategy to solve that would be uh, improve the channels in terms of um, real time participation. Uh, for example, use social medias, Twitter, and especially the GISA Facebook page. Uh, most students don't even know that the page exists. They, uh, in general, uh, follow uh, the Facebook post uh, that uh, the members of GISA uh, do uh, in the IHAD, uh 2004, uh, 2014 group, uh, but they don't actually follow the information on the GISA page. So um, maybe using the Facebook as a real time uh, tool to actually address the demands of the students even though sometimes the students don't have that much time. We, we all know that the work a lot here. It uh, can be crazy sometimes. Um, another idea, as uh, Andrea mentioned it, that um, about the, the class representatives, um, especially in the interdisciplinary courses programs, it's really difficult too for the class representatives to actually address the needs of the students uh, because you have sometimes 80 people in a room and you actually don't meet them because uh, we are, uh, they are only together in the mandatory courses and sometimes uh, you have people that waive the courses, so for them is also uh, a, a lot of work in terms of communicating with everyone. So uh, having tools to, and of course uh, using again uh, social medias to increase, um, facilitate uh, the work of the class representatives and then uh, connecting the class representatives uh, with GISA, having, uh, as Andrea said, uh, more um, uh, moments to, to have meetings and actually have GISA uh, being briefed about uh, the problems uh, that the, the programs are facing uh, could be uh, strategies to uh, facilitate communication, increase participation, and uh, increase uh, transparency. Okay, thank you. Um, in, I, I would like to extend this question a bit and um, would like to ask you to state two measures how you would engage the most passive of passive students. Really briefly, but please. Yeah. Can I start? Okay, so um, my strategy would be uh, we're just uh, finishing the semester, we are about to start a uh, uh, new year, and new year means new people, so it's the time to act. 
Um, for me, uh, an idea would be uh, start to starting to create this culture of participation within the first weeks of the of the next semester. So during the welcome week, actually um, making the students feel that they uh, are part of GISA. Sometimes I have the feeling that the the students think that GISA is this institution who has the power and. We are totally missing the, 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 the democracy uh, aspect of the thing. GISA is just representing us, all the students. So it's just a channel to facilitate the communication between the students and the administration and the other levels of the university. So uh, first, um, establishing during, during the welcome week and during these first weeks and, uh, strategies to actually engage them and to, to make them um, feel that they belong uh, to GISA and the ones who are there are just uh, representing them. And second, um, I'll take this opportunity of having new people uh, to actually start uh, implementing uh, new strategies with the class representatives, maybe even um, giving, I don't know, maybe workshops or having uh, like more guidelines in terms of uh, what is expected above about the, the class representatives, how many times they are supposed to meet with the vice president, and actually discuss with them which they think would be the best strategies to read the students. So I think that we, if we start with a different mindset uh, in the next semester, in the next year, it will be really uh, easier to engage the students. So uh, following uh, what Vanessa is saying, uh, using the events on the first week to try to engage these new students. Um, but then there's the question of how to engage the students who are actually here. Uh, one way is to try to understand why they are not engaged. Uh, try to talk to them, try to talk to their friends, their group of people and maybe use some new tools of communication, understand their needs and why they're not participating and why and what would make them participate more. Uh, that would be my take for events. Uh, well, for me, like, well, it's very difficult to mobilize the most passive person like in the crowd, like, is a thing that all democracy has a problem with that. And it's like, you are doing the best here to solve that, but it's not a miracle. But like, as a matter of fact, I think like, for example, creating a Facebook group of the GISA and the class representatives and the leaders of initiatives can increase communication and help like, I think is the, the main thing. Like as much as people think they are par part of the game, the, the communication is flowing and people are hearing, listening to them, the more the people get engaged. And even these people that are massively passive will engage in the end. Like, of course, I don't, I don't, I, I don't think like 100% of people will be engaged. Like, well, never happens anywhere in the world, like almost. But like, I think as a practical measure to create this Facebook group that you can't talk all the time between GISA and the, and the, and the representatives of the class, and the students that leads the initiatives are a good idea. And for sure, I agree with my, the other candidates here that using the welcome week to discuss the problems that are on the table of Jesus is a good idea because you, you capture the people in the beginning when they have the most, uh, they have the, these kind of dreams, they want you know, this kind of motivation to do something because they are like motivated a lot when they come here. And you have to capture them at that moment because it will help them to be fully engaged during the year. But if you, if, you want, if you wait for them to be fully engaged after six or seven months a year, it's not gonna happen, it's not gonna happen. So I think the welcome week is a crucial time, and not for just GISA, for every kind of initiative. It's true, like, or every kind of engagement is crucial moment. <clears throat> so for me, it's easy, uh, uh, cookies, and uh, good tea is gonna nurture an environment that's gonna allow people and attract people in. No, but what I mean is, uh, is, uh, is uh, create an environment that's casual and lets people you know, express things, have a discussion that doesn't always relate to you know, administrative or anything 
related to school even, but to, to, to have to start off, to jumpstart this initiative or incentivize people to come and just have a discussion. And also, I, there's, a, there's a significant um, body of Francophone students that are intimidated by, you know, an all Anglophone uh, Giza body or some kind of environment like that. And um, I, I speak French, and I'm, I'm friends, friends with a lot of the Francophone students here in Geneva. Uh, and uh, I feel like, you know, speaking French to them might ease the, the, um, the kind of uh, barriers uh, that, that uh, get in the way of expressing, expressing their concerns in that process. And I think um, the, the more quiet students uh, will, have, will have a say um, when we kind of break those barriers and we make this place more casual and uh, emphasize this type of initiatives. Thank you. Okay, thank you for these questions. I want to leave another issue um, to the podium for discussion. Um, my classmates and I found it quite hard to choose courses at the beginning of the semester, not in the, not referring to the subject, more to the quality of teaching. What would be your approach in order to improve the transparency of the teaching quality among the professors? Well, there's uh, not enough uh, reviews of uh, teachers on uh, platforms like grademyteacher.com and things. I don't totally believe in those because sometimes it's mi misleading and obviously people who have bad grades are gonna trash the, the teacher completely. But um, they do help when there's a big enough pool of people that review teachers. They do help in uh, bringing, you know, and having a sense of what the teacher is like, especially when there's re recurring patterns of, you know, like he's, he's not very good at presenting or whatnot. But I also want to add to that, uh, that um, especially in the student services and workshops for writing research and presentation skills, uh, I think uh, I want to, especially the latter, I want to, I want to kind of make that a requirement or push that, especially for training for TAs and some of the lecturers, maybe as the requirements and uh, uh, a prerequisite for being a, a lecturer or a TA here or a TA in any class. So that that could kind of uh, give a streamlined and uh, stable process of you know uh, presentation. Um, and uh, yeah, so different platforms uh, that could give you a good sense of what the teacher is about. Uh, well, I think there are two main ways. Like one that he mentioned, that's about this kind of review about students. In my previous university, you have this kind of system. It works pretty well. Like you have like for each kind of subject, you have a review. The main problem here is like, the subjects change a lot of times and the professors change a lot too because a lot of new professors coming. Mm -hmm. So if you see uh, some departments here, there are three professors that are like just new and then the other like in sabbatical year. So I really don't know, you know, like it's a difficult issue. Like I have not to say that I have a clear answer now to. Another possible issue is to make transparent the review that you have to do every single semester about the courses. There's a main possibility of working that. I don't think it would be easy to convince the, the administration to make it public. But I think like if you want something more like stable, sustainable, and transparent, you have to work on that. But as I, as I, as I, as I, I'm, I think that won't be easy because professor is not going to like to have their like review public that they're not like teaching well or comments that appear that. But I think you should work on that direction. For me, it's the, the direction to solve that. Um, I think as far as my position goes, what I could do is actually to promote um, meetings or events. Uh, so in order to students to get to know the TAs and professors better, their area of uh, study and research, uh, which is also in my platform, maybe potlucks or 
um, events by research area, then we could um, do something on this uh, area. Um, so, um, besides uh, all the, the suggestions that the other candidates uh, gave that I, I thought they were um, really interesting and I actually took note of some of them. Um, one thing that I think is uh, really important um, in terms of um, having this uh, knowledge uh, about the quality of the professors. And I, I'm more focusing here in this answer about um, how to choose the courses based on the, the previous evaluations of other students. Uh, it's, it's something that I, I realized that we are missing in different areas is the registration of processes. For example, we have all the knowledge here, all the second years that are here that actually uh, did the courses and that could give advice to, to first years. But it, we don't have this register, and the, as the other said, the, the only evaluation that we have is uh, conducted through the administration, and we actually don't have access to that. And so one way would be um, using maybe social medias um, to collect this information, this knowledge from the students, so we can use um, in next years, and maybe. Uh, try to do uh, a system of evaluation through GISA, but something maybe more um, objective rather than subjective, so it, it wouldn't be so, uh, maybe so problematic with, with the administrations. Uh, maybe uh, in um, like evaluation or survey in which you could uh, vote um, between one and five and actually evaluate some points. Um, but of course, this is something that we, I think we are all open uh, to hear from the students, like suggestions of, of how to improve uh, this uh, topic. Where do you see the pro and cons by revealing the information of the administration? By making the um, evaluation that is conducted by the administration public? Could you, could you repeat yes. the question? I couldn't understand. <laughs> Where do you see the advantages and disadvantages of making the, pub, the evaluation that is conducted by the administration um, public? Okay, um, so uh, I'm not, I'm just going to maybe give a personal opinion because I actually don't know uh, if it's, uh, there is some restriction in terms of uh, um, publicizing the information. Um, but I think it's really important even for the professors to dialogue about the, the results of the surveys. I think it's really weird that we do the surveys evaluating them and then we go to the next semester and then we don't dialogue with them. So we spend almost four months with them and interacting, and but we actually don't receive the feedback of uh, what we, we thought about the class and how we could improve. Um, so maybe uh, one idea would be actually not just having uh, one survey at the end of the course, but maybe in the middle of the course, or, or something even more informal that the, the professors could um, uh, just give to the students, and the students and professors could discuss together about the results so they could improve uh, their practice, and also the students could improve uh, their engagement in the class, and this would be something um, that I think it would make easier in terms of publicizing because you're making this uh, knowledge more a dialogue between students and professors and not some kind of uh, like a golden information that is confined in the, the administration and it's made like a secret that can be shared with the students. Um, but uh, addressing di directly the advantage and disadvantage, the advantage, of course, would be uh, that the students would know uh, the experiences of the others. And I think the possible disadvantage would be the non-agreement or the non-agreements or the resistance from the, the professors, uh, because although most of them are really critical um, in terms of development discussions. Sometimes they are not critical about their practice in class and this is actually something um, really difficult to, to achieve. So I think that uh, at first uh, it would have some resistance, 
but in, in the end, uh, I mean, it's something that involves constructing a different mindset of this relationship between students and professors and actually destabilizing uh, these power relations that we have in, in our classes. Uh, well, this is not really my area, but <laughs> uh, I have to agree with Vanessa that on a personal, actually, um, statement that uh, there's kind of a lack of dialogue regarding this uh, evaluation and uh, the response to this evaluation. I'm not going to extend much since it's not my area. Well, I, I have to agree with Vanessa in the sense that I think this idea of making a middle, a middle evaluation that professor give is a good idea to go. Like maybe, because like, if he has to add and wait for the end of semester to change, he would just change in the next semester or next year for the other students. So it doesn't, well, it's good for like improving the long run, but for the students that are taking the class, it doesn't help much. So I think he's taking like, trying to encourage the professor to make his middle, middle term evaluation for them is a good idea. And as a matter of fact, like, if you're thinking about being transparent, the evaluations, the advantage clearly is transparency. You want you know the information, know what people think about this professor or not. And the advantage, as she says, was the resistance of them. Like they'll be not like so happily to see them like transparent that they are doing they are giving good or bad lectures. And the, so it's like it's a kind of like natural feeling that nobody likes to be criticized so much. So like and especially like the professors will be not so happy to see that. I think it's a good way to go and try to make publicized public, this public, but I think a middle, more practical, pragmatic way, as you suggest, was this middle term evaluation. The feedback. Um, I'm not a big proponent of open uh, reviews and uh, uh, critiques of classes. Uh, I believe more in, in like uh, people getting together and putting together constructive feedback for the teacher and then having a conversation with the teacher in class. And that's what we did, uh, for example, in our gender class. And, uh, but the, the bad part was that we gave some really rough and uh, very critical and almost rude comments beforehand but then, I mean, then we had a conversation in, ca in class um, saying, okay, let's put that behind us and let's have a constructive conversation on this and let's go forward with what we can improve upon. And then it was a lot better. I mean, still the class is all right. It's not really good, but um, we have a better format now, a more satisfying one. Thank you. But I think okay, the gender, can I, can I just, uh, but I think the gender class more or less what you are proposing more or less like you are making an evaluation in the middle term to, to the professor see what's going on or not and then like the professor try to change or not. I don't, I don't like what's the, you know, what's the difference between what you did in gender and what's the, I know what that not be public but like the middle term like. Uh, my medev gender class. Sorry, uh, I should elaborate on that. It's, it's just one class. It's one example of, yeah, uh, that we had problems with, where we gave uh, mid-term, uh, uh, mid-semester uh, feedback, and it was really rude and rough. Anyways, but we had a, con a constructive conversation, and uh, that's a conclusion, and it went forward from there. But uh, yeah, I guess it's not too different from what you said. Uh, we can just build upon it. and. Uh, Really, the conversation part is really important because we, at the end of the semester, we just throw something out there and it, we don't know if they even read it. Um, you know, there's no incentive there, but they have the pressure of the class when they have that. Yeah. Vanessa? Yeah, are, are we able to make comments after our own comments? No, actually no. not. Okay, so <laughs> I'm, going to be, I'm going to take this opportunity and just <laughs> make one comment while it is still um, valid. Um, no, it's just to, to clarify um, what I said before. Um, not, it's not a, it's not that much about 
the, the structure that you use, for example, a survey or a conversation, but it's more about establishing a different culture of feedback than the one that we have now, because the, the culture that we have now is your employer as the clients for feedback to evaluate the ones that they hire. And basically, that's why it's problematic, because the professors they don't feel comfortable. They are not going to use this to improve the relationship that they had with their class. So the point is to create a different culture of feedback in which the professors feel comfortable to ask, to ask for feedback, because they know that the main point of it is to dialogue with the class and not to be evaluated, just to be evaluated by the administration. I understand the point, and I understand why uh, the administration needs to do that, but I think it has a different um, use in terms of evaluating for the administration and evaluating for the students. Okay, thank you. Uh, before we leave the room to the audience, I would like to ask one last question. Um, this institute is considered uh, is an institute for international development studies, and the majority of the students are going to one of the international organizations afterwards. Um, by now, it seems that workshops like um, project management, time management are completely missing in the curriculum. What do you think could be your impact to improve the situation? Right. Yeah, thanks. Well, um, this is such an interesting question because I had the opportunity of uh, doing my first workshop this semester. And it was really interesting because it was my first um, real experience with bilingualism. Uh, it was a workshop uh, about monitoring and evaluation. And it was half, uh, half given in, in English and half given in, in French. And for me, it was a really, really uh, interesting experience because um, I, I could really understand what bilingualism is. And I could really experience this multicultural environment. And all the, the classmates that joined me in the, this workshop, after the workshop ended, first were frustrated because we didn't get credits for it. We don't receive credits anymore for the workshops. But second, we're really, really happy because we actually did a two-day journey of really practical learning. Uh, and we had the opportunity of uh, uh, having a conversation with the professors. They are really open to organize more workshops. Uh, we just need to show, and I know that many of the students have the same feeling, that they want more practical activities. Uh, not only uh, the students from the interdisciplinary courses, but also uh, the students from the other programs uh, that don't even have this experience of uh, doing, having the possibility of doing workshops or engaging in the ARS project. Uh, we all share this feeling that we need more uh, practical uh, activities, uh, but we actually need to participate. We actually need to engage to show the administration uh, that we can change the situation. As far as I understood by uh, 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 having this conversation with the professors before, uh, they had uh, many workshops. The workshops were, uh, let's say, one week, and then they were three days, and then two days, and now we have no credit. So if we have this clear demand for more practical activities, why don't we engage? We need to just uh, show to the administration that this is really important to us, uh, not just in, in, in terms of our future careers, but in terms of knowing better your classmates because the classes are smaller, and actually being able to develop uh, skills um, beside, uh, besides of uh, the, the academic um, experience that we already have. So my, my strategy would be uh, to try to um, collect this demand of the students into a document and try to dialogue with the administrations and actually share these good experiences, talk with the students that already did the, the workshops and, and collect their experiences so we can dialogue with the, the administrations and the head of the programs. Um, also being from an uh, interdisciplinary program, I think practical, um, uh, pra more practical take, it uh, would actually improve our learning here. Uh, even I think GISA could promote it, uh, some workshops maybe, we can check the av availability, uh, the engagement of the students. 
and like uh, talk with the whole board about that actually, and even like more uh, cultural takes on that as well, not only practical, cultural, and um, uh, get a more like a wide variety of activities on that. Well, I'll take more time on that issue, just because I. I'm second year MIA, so I, I just passed the ARS, I passed all the, all the way along. <coughs> so, first of all, increase the number of workshops, I think is a must. Uh, the two main, I think the most interesting experience in the institute was first negotiation, negotiation and mediation workshop that I had. And the second was um, a workshop of the ICRC about um, how to negotiate humanitarian things. And these are, so in one, in one sense, you should increase the number of workshops given by the graduate institute, but at, one, at the other level, you, you should try to bring the organizations in Geneva to, bring, to make workshops here. It's not just RCRC, maybe the, the NDP, maybe other organizations, because they have knowledge and they can share with us, as the RCRC do, do every single year. So I think it's a kind of way of doing, doing that. In the case of AMIA, or AIS should be improved, because AIS is a very in, important like way of improving your uh, professional skills. It's a practical experience, and MIA AIS is quite problematic because it's not bounded by your option of your interest. So you can uh, choose to work in conflict, and you are ending up working in economics in the end, in AIS, or in football. So it's like really problematic, so you have to deal with that and the doctor level, because what happened is like, there's a lack of uh, training on research methodology here. So it is important to make workshops on that too for doctors, to improve research methods, research uh, softwares. So you don't have to, in fact, I think you, is there's a general lack of these workshops in all levels, and uh, you have to work a lot on that, and to push the institute to provide that. Um, so I'm working with uh, Collaborate for Social Impact right now as part of the programs team and uh, we're trying to find a lot of different workshops available in Geneva for our next program. In that, in that process you really see um, Geneva is a great platform, is an amazing platform for all these workshops, especially I mean within Switzerland. There's a lot available out there on negotiations, um, uh, you know, social impact, uh, presentation skills, um, you know, debating. There's all of these things, and uh, they're available. So it's 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 easy to go out there and find them, and people even provide these workshops for free. Uh, but what I would do is really integrate them in the in the ESOID and have people sign up for the ones that they're interested in and then uh, have them available if uh, enough people are interested in them. But uh, my conclusion is that they're out there, these workshops are available, and they should be emphasized. But, uh, and uh, I will work with the administration to uh, make them available. If not, uh, GISA will make them available. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions from the audience at this point? Thank you. I actually have two questions. Um, one question is related to choosing uh, the subjects and um, the courses where we are interested in, as we just discussed. Um, but, but I have one specific question related to that, because it's particularly difficult for us to register in a course we have a great interest in because if I enter the internet at 9.24 and another student entered at 9.23 he has more right to get a course than me. So do you think it's a question for the four of you, I believe, uh, there is any way we can improve on that, we can uh, make rational arguments for giving more democratic chances for all the students? to register for the same course. This is one question, and the other question is related to 
bilingualism in the Institute. I know all of us are interested in this topic. We are uh, in international Geneva and we know the majority of students can't uh, speak in French or can't, uh, are still afraid of taking courses in French because we can't really speak French. So, um, and one of the reasons many students apply for an institute in Geneva is to be able to be bilingual. So do you have any kind of ideas on how to improve this, these areas? Thank you. Please. Um, thank you very much for your question. Um, I'm going to first address the first part of the question about uh, the course registration and the lack of democratic access to the courses. Um, well, I'm not a, a, a native English speaker, but the first thing, one of the first expressions that I learned when I got here was first come, first served. And this was something that really bothered me uh, when you think about the, the system of the course registration. Um, I think that we should and then I leave it open to, to suggestions from students and even um, from uh, the other members of GISA that have, have been in this process for long. And of course, uh, the administration of how could we establish better criteria in terms of uh, actually uh, being able to register for the courses. But I share the same uh, feeling that you have. And well, um, last semester I had a really tough, tr a really tough moment with the, the system, and then I was pushed out of one of the courses. So it's really frustrated because you, cr you cross, I mean, the world, you cross the ocean to come to a place to actually study what you want, and then you, you get in, in courses that are not uh, your main interest. So this is something that uh, we need uh, definitely to address better, and I I'm, I'm open to. Uh, ideas and two collaborations in terms of um, how to establish this criteria. And the second question, thank you very much for asking about this. Actually, I received a, a question through email um, that I was going to ask how I could, how I should proceed about it um, from a student uh, called Buna uh, who couldn't be here. Um, but then you, you made basically the same question about uh, how to, to broader the discussion about the bilingualism and the institute. And uh, in my perception, and of course I'm going to give um, my personal experience too, um, the institute uh, accepts students with a really low level of French and that are really willing to learn, but they get here and they don't have the opportunity. Of course, you're not going to take a six credit course that talks about economics and, I don't know, and development in French if you have an A1 level. I mean, no one is going to do that. And this is really difficult because it makes also the access of the, the students who want to take these courses and want to take it, them in French difficult because they don't have um, this process of transition. I mean, how many years did you l take to learn English if you're not an, an in English native speaker? I mean, things don't happen that fast. And I think that in the institute nowadays doesn't provide enough um, opportunities for us to actually improve our French. Um, besides the, the, the intensive French course, which actually provides you a level that sometimes it's not compatible with the a level that you actually have uh, in terms of speaking and in terms of being able to, to engage in the language. So um, one of the ideas that I have and of course, I'm really open to the collaboration and I'm, I'm really grateful for this email um, uh, from uh, this person who said who belongs to one of the uh, uh, Francophone initiatives here at the Institute uh, and said that wanted to collaborate with me if I were uh, elected. My idea is to actually count with uh, the Institute, the, the, the students that are fluent in French and all the, the initiatives that we have here that have the focus of actually uh, putting forward uh, the French uh, as a, a language here at the Institute to uh, try to start next semester uh, a different approach to, to French. We can start uh, doing through GISA uh, workshops. We can try to, to engage the new students and actually uh, 
create a different culture uh, and different mindset with these students that are coming, that they are really welcome if they don't know the language and that they are actually going to receive our support in terms of, I don't know, in one year being able to uh, get to B2 and actually uh, engage and participate. Um, to be completely honest, uh, even though the uh, question uh, regarding the, the access of to, to classes actually bothers me as well. Like, I didn't think of it. I don't have like a proper answer, so I'm not going to give it here. But regarding French, I, I agree with Vanessa. I think actually bringing together these students, the Francophone uh, students initiative, and uh, maybe trying to promote with them something new, uh, uh, cultural activities, uh, debates, because uh, personally I thought that coming here at this time of the year I would have like uh, advanced French and I don't, I have like a middle French, I can have daily activities that I can understand and I can read and I can talk, but that's it. I think uh, what I miss here most is like somebody who I can talk and debate and maybe if we can uh, have a group debate uh, current events in France and try to promote this kind of activities with these uh, students uh, and try to engage students who are willing to learn <coughs> French as well. But not only through the, the classes offered here, we can try and achieve actually something. Well, in my case, I will start with the French thing. Well, like, I did the course in the summer with University of Geneva of French course, intensive course. I didn't do the whole, I did like more or less six weeks there. I don't think you, you need to reinvent in the wheel. Like my, my point of view is like, well, the, the Graduate Institute, when they made the agreement with the government, one of the, the indicators is to make partnerships with the University of Geneva. So the more partnerships you have, the better. So my idea is like, to try to strengthen this partnership with the University of Geneva and you don't have to create a French course here. The students here can attend the course there. And like during the six weeks or even nine weeks, and then maybe make an agreement about the prices with the institute, the institute can like subsidize. So you can work on that. You know, like the institute can provide for free maybe the, 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 this nine, nine weeks course there and, and provide the visa for that. So, because the main problem with the visa, because the, if the people want to study here French for during the, during the summer, the visa have to be earlier for them to stay here in Geneva. But I think that things could be managed. But I think it's easy. You have to know, they have to know how already, how to make people like at least, because people go there to have at least B1 level to try to get B2 to start the University of Geneva. So they have to know how already. So maybe this is a possible venue, venue for working on the French thing. And regarding the subjects, I don't have a clear answer. I suffered that too during my second semester. I think I lost almost all my subjects. I have to email all the professors asking to increase the number of students or to make another class. So informally, what you can do is like try to convince the professors to make a second class when there are too many people wanting. So like for example, uh, I had the class with Professor Hoffman about secure institutions. They're like there are 25 places and there are 50 people wanting like that class. So they, she gave two classes. So more or less people were happy with that. And all the options can be studied. Like in the case of the MIA in the MEDEV, you have the tracks, right? So maybe making a, a kind of like preference for, for example, if the someone is from track two, she has a preference to get, to get track two courses than the others, but like it's for disciplinary course programs. But not, uh, this has to be studied to see the impact and how the freedom of students to choose to. We cannot just change and don't think about that. And the other stuff is to better plan the classes. Because for example, in MIA, half of the people are more or less track two in my year. But they offer more or less the same number of classes for each track. So track two people are kind of crowded and there's no, no, no class at all. So from my personal experience, you have to have a better planning. So in general, what people choose in that program, to know like to plan better 
the like the subject and the areas. Yeah. So to address your first concern, um, I think uh, we're all struggling with the same problem. I mean, we come in class uh, and. Uh, uh, and then th there's the first come first serve um, process, and that's that's a big problem. But uh, one of my undergrad uh, teachers uh, did something very clever, and he didn't. He was like, "Okay, I don't care who came first. You email me with your interests and why you want to take this class and your background. Very brief, one paragraph. Already there." He had some people leaving. I'm not emailing, I'm not doing that. But if you really have an interest in this class and it's overcrowded, that would be a way to address that problem instead of saying, you're first, that's it. Uh, so that's how I would uh, emphasize uh, this issue and uh, make it better for everyone. Um, also, to address the francophone uh, issue, uh, I mean, I'm here, I took two uh, French classes and they were both in the ENZO program last semester and that's the last remaining program that's francophone in this institute. That's a big problem. So I'll be addressing that uh, issue with Buna, who is uh, a part of the francophone association here at the institute. Uh, so we'll t take those matters forward and uh, really emphasize that problem here at the institute. Because I'm francophone. English is my second language, I mean, uh, and, um, and I really want more classes in French. And also, I want more exchange in French. I want this environment to be more francophone, give people the opportunity to speak French, debate in French. As a matter of fact, Luciana, you can come debate with me anytime. Uh, and, um, and really uh, nurture this environment to be francophone. And uh, I mean, we have the tandems. Uh, but also, we want to make we want to have even tutors that just make their time available or just be available for the students that really need it, and uh, maybe even have them employed by the institute. Now I'm making some crazy promises, but that could be something interesting mm -hmm. to explore. Um, I've been a French te tutor before, and uh, I know how important it is, and I know how people learn, and really. There's nothing better than to be exposed to the language every day, 24-7. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions? No, there aren't. Okay, then I um, ask you to give a short final statement why you're the right candidate and uh, why we should work for you. Vanessa, please start. Not more than one minute, please. Not more than one minute? Yes. OK. So now you all had the opportunity to um, see me this during this debate sharing my thoughts. And now, well, we have until Wednesday to actually talk in person or through Facebook or through email. It's the time for you to uh, actually uh, share with me your thoughts, too. And uh, so we can uh, improve our uh, our pl our collaboration in terms of my uh, platform. And well, I wouldn't say that I'm the best candidate. Uh, I would say that you should decide that which candidate uh, is the best. And well, if I'm not the the best candidate, uh, I would totally agree with your decision, and I would totally trust in the person who is going to be uh, the the next VP. Uh, because it is going to represent me as well as I'm going to represent all the students. So uh, feel free to approach me and to send me suggestions. And I want all of you participating in, in the elections on Wednesday. I know it's not mandatory, but please engage, participate, uh, show your voice. Thank you. Um, I already talked about the events themselves. Now I want to say that uh, why I'm uh, good for this position. I already have prior experience in uh, students association and events organization in those students association back home. And another uh, important thing that I want to um, to to put that uh, I want to make this not only good for uh, this board but for the next board as well. I want to organize the GISA, make a file for the next events coordination on the venues, on prices, what did work, what didn't work, and make 
something for the future as well, for future students, not only for us. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Well, for me, well, as far as it goes, accountability-wise, I'm the only one who showed up here, <laughs> guys. So, uh, yeah, and say to your vote on Wednesday. Thank you. Well, like... I think I'm the good candidate for president because I have a history here in the <laughs> institute, as I already said. I leaded, I founded and leaded a, a, a human rights initiative. I know the problems of the masters. I passed all the problems that you have passed, and more than that, because I passed the transition to the Maison de la Paix, that it was incredible annoying. I be here for more four years, so if I do a bad job, I will suffer the consequence of that. And this is a good, it's a personal issue because, like, I'm having more than motive, many enough motivation to do this a good job. And I think I have a clear flag that is taking the opportunity of this new year that will be the negotiations with the government to make to pressure for more transparency. I, I'm reading the 150, 100 and something pages of the government agreement with Graduate Institute, the indicators and so on, and it will be my focus of working, improving transparency. I have experience, I have been here a long time, and I have a clear mind, I have a clear objective. That's it. Thank you very much. Uh, listen, um, I, again, I. I want to be, I'm running on honesty, and I want to be concise, and I want to take your concerns seriously. Um, and I mean, at least I think so. I'm approachable. I want to hear you out. I want to have a discussion on uh, what you care about and what you want to improve upon in this institute. And I have a few things on my agenda, but those things are nothing without your support. And uh, your backing, obviously. And uh, obviously, I ha I'm multilingual. Uh, I have a tact for uh, conversation and uh, uh, socializing. And uh, I know a few people in the administration already. Um, and through that, um, I can uh, improve and um, get our agenda forward and uh, get a conversation and then dialogue going. And, uh, and really build upon the pillars that previous GISA board has uh, put forth and uh, make this place a better place. Um, now, thank you. I hope uh, you have a relative idea of what I stand for and what I can do for you. Thank you for listening. Okay, thank you for the presentation. Thanks for the debate. Uh, the ballot will be sent out on Wednesday, 8 a.m., and you have 24 hours to vote. So please engage. Thank you. Bye.